Hello everyone, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I've been contemplating the problem of Starship and its payload capacity, and I've sort of latched on to the question of the super heavy tank. Because with the space shuttle stack, the external tank is really light. And the reason why the external tank is really light is because most of it's just hanging off the stack and it's not load bearing. It doesn't have the engines at the bottom of it, which is why it's only 26 tons in its final configuration. Whereas on Energia, of course, with the engines at the bottom of the external tank, the Energia core is more than 80 tons and the SLS core similarly is more than 80 tons. And so I thought about configuring Starship so that basically the big tank just hangs loose and all the engines would be on Starship. Now this of course causes other problems, which we will get to separately, but it's just amusing. So uh, here we have not 33 engines on Starship, it's actually 21, which causes other problems. But right now we have 21 engines clustered and I locked the gimbling on the most of the engines. Only three of them are gimbling, the same ones that are usually gimbling. And I have gone for aluminum lithium gridded tanks for the external tank bit. I could have gone for composite tanks, which would have been much, much lighter, as you can see right there, or even refined composite tanks, which are even lighter. But no, we're going with aluminum lithium tanks, which is basically what the shuttle stack had, and going with the mass like that. With that, we have less than an 80 ton mass for the tank, more like 70 tons, whereas the tank for a super heavy just a tank, not the engines, is like 120 tons. So that's a great mass savings there. And here I'm putting not just the payload, which is 100 tons, but also Pekka, who was watching during the live stream, insisted that I put 20 extra tons for heat shielding for the engines. So I put an extra tank with 20 tons of heat shielding. So, I mean, that's a lot of heat shielding. Hopefully we don't need that. But anyway, it's a 100 ton payload in there. And I decided that I would try procedural SRBs because the main tank there is feeding the engines on Starship and lasting 2 minutes and 56 seconds. And we need the SRBs to last the same amount of time to counterbalance it. So basically the SRBs would go at the same time as the external tank fully drains to keep the balance. Uh, but I, I didn't get enough thrust out of the procedural SRBs and also there's the additional problem that the procedural SRBs don't have a thrust curve. We need a thrust curve so that when the external tank lightens and also the SRBs lighten, uh, they go down in thrust by a commensurate amount. And so I decided to use the SLS SRBs. Uh, I, I forgot the nose cones before bringing it out because I wanted to check the balance here. And uh, realizing that we didn't get enough thrust on that side, I put four of them. So, I mean, which makes sense because in this case, the tank on that side is really heavy. Uh, so now with four of them and throttling down the Starship engines and also not lighting the three vacuum engines that we still have on there, uh, we can go up, but very slowly. So we do need the 21 engines that I have on there and ideally at full thrust. Uh, but yeah, this is how it's going. Now obviously this is supposed to be somewhat of a cursed thing by default, and Pekka has already suggested putting Raptor 9 boosters instead of these SRBs on that side, so that's already a thing. Uh, I already have a Raptor 9 booster thing, the Unix boosters, so don't worry about suggesting that, okay? Uh, the, the SRBs are there mainly to highlight the efficiencies of the shuttle stack. Uh, the fact that the, it allows the external tank to be much lighter, but we have a problem with the, the SRBs here, the SLS SRBs, only lasting 2 minutes and 8 seconds. Whereas the external tank fuel lasts 2 minutes and 56 seconds. So I have to reduce the size of that tank, which reduces our delta V as well. Uh, but we simply can't use all that fuel as long as we're using the SLS SRBs. I contemplated some ideas like air starting, but of course we're having trouble getting off the ground in the first place. Um, the ideal thing would be to have a procedural SRB with the same amount of thrust, and I'll try and see about that as well. We'll have a mega SRB that lasts close to three minutes. But again, the thrust curve issue is still an issue. And these do have a good thrust curve for them, for this purpose. So anyway, I got the nose cones on. I'm not trying to make this fancy or anything. I've got stock nose cones, procedural tanks all over the place. And now the core tank, the external tank there, is looking pretty sad, right? Uh, and insofar as it's supposed to be hanging off, it probably should be thinner. 
uh, but then it can't accommodate for it. It might be it could accommodate for it, so it needs. Here, I tried to light the vacuums on the surface as well, and that doesn't work. It's too, too much thrust on that side. So I, once again, did not light the vacuum engines at the surface here. And I ultimately throttled down a bit here to get the balance right again. And we straighten up. So, yes, it's a complicated business here. But can we get the 100 tons to orbit? That's what we're looking for here. And remember, that's with an extra 20 tons of heat shielding, though apparently the heat shielding doesn't work because we saw one of the engines explode because of the gimbling of one of the gimbling engines. So we lost an engine already. And I'm tracking how much fuel is being depleted in the big tank uh, so that we know how much we need to reduce it by in the future. And we don't really need to decouple the SRBs separately, right? Because they go off at the same time as the external tank by necessity. So since they didn't need to separately go off, I've got separatrons on the external tank bit. But it's getting a little bit weirdly shaped. On the bright side though, because they don't separate, uh, we can put parachutes at the top of the SRBs. And the whole thing will be very light because it's all going to be empty by the end. And potentially we could retrieve that. It could be reusable. They did reuse the SRB casings. It wasn't exactly the most economical thing. But we could retrieve not just the SRB casings here, but also the external tank because it doesn't get very far and it's going off with them. So that's all we need. We just need some parachutes and it'll dunk into the ocean. It's not sensitive. It's just, they're really just big nozzles, these SRBs. And here we go. I just need to separate it off cleanly and we'll be on our way. Unfortunately, I didn't know when exactly they would go out because the clock started earlier than actual launch because of wiggling on the ground. I didn't need to lock the tanks. And eh, well, the tanks explode there. We need more Separatrons, clearly. Or whatever funny hydraulic system SpaceX would want to cook up. I shut off some engines. We want to, you know, lean towards the vacuum engines at this point. We don't want quite so many of the sea level engines on, we don't need it, we've got high thrust to weight ratio. So again, 100 tons plus 20 tons of extra heat shielding, which is currently up front now, it really should be in the back. Uh, and here we are, close to making orbit. But as we get close to making orbit, we're not quite reserving enough fuel for this to come down like a starship would. Then again, I sort of want to turn it into a shuttle now, don't I? I mean, just on principle. But uh, yeah, 114 isn't great. Of course, we're going to be ejecting out the 100 ton payload, so we'll have more than that, but that's probably not enough to touch down the way starship normally does. Though probably enough to deorbit. So I proceed to try to turn it into a shuttle. I've previously made a star shuttle. You can see the star shuttle videos, but we've changed things here. We now have a huge amount of engines in the tail and the mass of starship is different. It's heavier. And yeah, altogether, it's something like 300 tons or close to it. You can see 313 tons. Now, obviously it doesn't need to take off from runway and this is a bad idea. We don't need to do this. This is just being silly, <laughs> but uh, I decided to try it anyway. So uh, here we are. I tried to make the aerodynamic surfaces not too much larger than what Starship already has. It hopped there just uh, because it hopped. And really the landing gear is too far back for it to rotate anyway. Given the roll tendency right there, I decided that the main landing gear was too close together and so I moved them farther apart. But as we move them farther apart, the only place to put them is the wings, which are tilted up. And that makes it even harder to rotate uh, because they have to be further back. And also, uh, well, our tail clearance isn't great in this situation. And we end up being sort of a tail dragger. On the bright side, it points us upward, which is optimistic. But uh, yeah, this isn't going to go well. However, as we watch this meet its inevitable demise, at least we got 100 tons to orbit. So there you go, validating the design of the shuttle stack as being superior to everything else. And uh, remember, we don't have to worry about the foam because this isn't hydrogen, right? There is no foam on the tank for Super Heavy. Uh, there's nothing to hit the tiles of Starship anyway. Uh, we could replace the SRBs, don't worry. Uh, but uh, it's still fun to have the SRBs. They, they are apparently, well, they're, they're actually they're not that cheap. But all right, there you have it. 
the Starship stack transformed into the shuttle stack, complete with SRBs, though double the SRBs, and all the engines on the Starship side. And yeah, make of it what you will. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.